All right, so it is Wednesday and it is almost noon, which means I am going to meet with Tara who does all the emails. So if you guys have noticed over the last couple weeks, there's actually been a big improvement in our, our email content, um, both in terms of how frequently it goes out, how organized it is, um, and how pretty it looks. So uh, that's all due to Tara. So we have a meeting every week and uh, it's actually right down the street from my office. We just meet at a Starbucks. And so it's, uh, it's a good time every week that we get together and so, uh, yeah, you guys should be able to see some awesome stuff coming out of that, and we'll uh, we'll do an interview with Tara sometime because she's got a really interesting background. So we will uh, maybe one of these weeks we'll just have her meet up at my house and we'll do some work and we can do an interview with her. Um, she actually worked at Bowflex before this, so she's actually taught me a lot of really cool things. So I'm uh, actually just walking down there, so we'll do a a quick POV walk on the way to Starbucks. You can see the uh, the sketchy walk that I go through every day. So it's it's not all glamorous. Some of it's walking under the freeway. Alright everybody, this is interview two. We're still here at summer camp. I've got Coach Amber. There is no ice cream truck for this one. Miss <laughs> Susie got interrupted by the ice cream truck. Um, so we'll just kind of start. Tell me a little bit about your background and how you came to each perform. Sure. So, um, gosh, um, my background. I own a CrossFit gym. Um, before that, you name it, I've done everything from um, teaching to designing programs for assisted living facilities to increase the longevity of their residents, to um, creating educational field trips for businesses, to um, teaching at a local university. So you name it, I feel like I've probably done it. So how'd you go from... <laughs> Geriatrics to CrossFit. I know, crazy. So, well, teaching school and geriatrics were kind of similar. Um, and I went from that to then teaching at the university. I taught um, classes on how to teach teachers or how teachers teach kind of thing. So pedagogy. Yes. So I did, did a lot of that and loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, became involved in CrossFit and... Um, the university that was that I was at didn't agree with CrossFit. Um, they were very specific in what I was allowed to teach with their training, um, which was conflicting for me. And um, I loved doing CrossFit um, after teaching group exercise and spin and step class and all that. I mean, I've done all that too. So really enjoyed the community aspect of it and thought I'm going to start my own business. Um, so I left my teaching job and opened my own gym. I'm, I know, kind of jumping off. When was that? What year was that? 2012. Okay. 2012. Okay. So that was kind of like peak CrossFit. Yes. Time. Okay. Yes, it was. Um, and I wasn't, um, I'm not one of those nuts that have been doing CrossFit forever. Um, my husband did it back in 06 um, and was gone for a period of time. That's where he was introduced to it. To it came home and said, you have to try it. And I was like, this is horrible. Like, I can't do any of these things. Um, I'm totally <laughs> uncoordinated. And I just, nothing's like to a beat. Like I was teaching with all my classes and it just, it was just weird. So I would cherry pick all the workouts that I liked 
um, and that I thought I was really good at and would do those. <laughs> and so after a period of time of kind of sucking it up and um, a lot of humble pie of figuring some things out, um, started to really follow CrossFit and the dot-com site. Um, saw some great results um, and loved it. Absolutely loved it. I was never part of a CrossFit gym. We have, I have three kids and at the time they were um, all really itty bitty and CrossFit gyms don't typically have daycare. Mm -hmm. So um, in order for my husband and I to work out together, we would have to go to the local Globo gym and use their daycare and then kind of piecemeal our workouts on what equipment was open that we could share and come back to and still be open. We were doing something. And um, after talking about it an awful lot, I said to my husband, I'm gonna open my own gym. And he said, no, 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 <laughs> no, we're not doing that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I really think I am. He's like, no, no, I really need you to think about that. <laughs> so I did. So you won that battle. So I did. <laughs> I did win that battle. So was it like you came home with the keys and like then a bunch of stuff showed up at the door? Um, or were you like, hey, I'm doing this. You should help me out. Oh, my God. So I, he said, okay, um, don't think this is a good idea, but if you're going to go down this path, I want you to figure out A, B, C, and D, and then come back and let's talk about it. So, of course, I was like, okay, great. So what do I do? I research A, B, C, and D, and I come back, and I'm like, here you go. I got it all figured out. <laughs> he's like, oh my gosh, okay, I need you to do like um, <laughs> a few more things. So I did that and next thing you know, I'm turning the keys and opening a CrossFit gym. And when I say I opened my gym, it was maybe um, 400 square feet. I mean, it's kind of like right here. Mm -hmm. This little footprint right yep. here is like, oh. where it started with um, five people that took a chance on me and um, it has grown and now we're in a 4,000 square foot facility, um, wow. a kids program, tons of stuff um, from that platform. My older two children are national level Olympic weightlifters. I mean, it is just it's been an amazing ride. So how is it being your own boss and also <laughs> being an employee at the same I, time? I love, 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 love Eat to Perform for that. That at the end of the day, um, it's ultimately not your circus. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is my favorite part of Eat to Perform. And in fact, my husband and I talk about it all the time that at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. I, I can call Paul and I'm like, hey, here's this problem. Let me hand it to you. Yeah. Where I get that all the time at the gym, and it's just like, oh Lord, have mercy. Somebody, That's somebody awesome. else have it. So I am so thankful for my role in Eat to Perform. <laughs> so how did you, how did you find us? Okay. How did you become a client, and then how did you become a coach? So uh, I had a business mentor that um, knew Paul. And um, he said, you've got to get a nutrition program going. He said, there's this guy, Paul, and eat to perform. You have to do it. I said, okay, fantastic. If you say so, it must be amazing. So um, his gym was using eat to perform. So called Paul, or, um, my mentor set up a meeting, talked to Paul, and next thing you know, uh, CrossFit Hickson's doing eat to perform. Signed up myself and was a client, loved it. Um, that same year that I signed up, I took the coach's course, which is fantastic. Um, what year was that? 2015. Okay. So that was right about the same time Susie yes. joined. Yes. Okay. So, loved it. I love, um, school, continuing education. So the minute that course came up, yes, I'm on it. So, took the course, loved it, but new with, um, in 2015, my gym was still new. Um, it's kind of like having a toddler, like I'm, I'm close to being out of diapers, but I'm not quite there mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, um, I would have loved to have been on staff at that time, but the gym was too demanding. It, it was growing. It was expanding. Um, I wanted to implement what we, what you guys were doing in my gym, but couldn't do both at the same time. So, um, 
always had it in the back of my mind. Anyway, so the gym grew and grew, grew, grew. Um, and um, it got to a point where I was able to step back and um, let some other people coach a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, have a little more responsibility, which freed me up to uh, um, pursue an interest of mine and something that I enjoyed and that I was doing, which was each perform. So how has the transition from client to coach been and what things surprised you kind of being on the other side? Um, client to coach, uh, there is a lot of work. It's kind of like going from, um, working out to owning the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was a little bit, um, with, how much work um, went into the coaching side mm -hmm. of each to perform, um, but it gave me a better appreciation, just like anything else, a better appreciation for somebody else's role um, and that role and how it plays in my success as a client. So mm -hmm. just putting on another person's pair of shoes gives you yeah. a whole different perspective, um, and I, I think made me a better client because I understood <laughs> I understood um, the other person's side the, the coaches the coaches having a global view um, and being now that I've, I am a coach being emotionally invested and um, wanting to see me succeed um, so intensely yeah that I, think I, I think that's huge being on the other side and, and feeling that so. I think that's one of the things that doesn't always come across in the work we do is how invested we are in each client's success yeah I just mean, just knowing that every time we open your file like every time I click on somebody's file and it's loading all I want to see is just like awesome stuff right it's like you kind of have that moment of what's this going to look like well look that like? or i want to know um tell me about your race like, yeah how have you not told me about your race you're killing me smalls like i know you had a race <laughs> this weekend help me out i'm dying to hear about it or your competition we were working to cut weight for your competition how'd it go and then there's nothing <laughs> or you know somebody goes on vacation or you know whatever i want to know how how did all that stuff go because there's on my side, building that relationship, that rapport, I genuinely care. Just like for all my athletes in my gym, um, when they, you know, have a PR or are able to do, you know, five double unders in a row, and they've yeah. been working so hard with the jump rope, you know, that's I love that. So. So you came on about a year ago, right? So it's been a year. Okay. Yes. Yes. So what has been? So I asked Susie some questions. I'll ask you a few different ones. What do you feel like has been your biggest contribution to each perform so far? Hmm. Um, hmm. Besides the good jokes. <laughs> uh, my biggest contribution, I think, would be offering um, an opposing viewpoint that doesn't always agree with Paul. <laughs> Bingo. There you go. So somebody that goes against the grain that has a different perspective um, with Paul sitting in the shoes of owning it. And, and I genuinely heartfelt get the intensity. Um, and I know how that comes across in my gym and um, all the different hats that he wears. And um, I think having somebody that understands that position and the vested interest yeah. and the financial investment that's in that, that's also on the other side, being able to say, hang on a second, um, let's, let's mull this over. And just um, offering a different opinion. Okay. I don't know that that's the right answer. So you're the, <laughs> I can't remember who it was, but somebody was like, in every discussion we have, we always pick one person and says, no matter what you think, you have to be the the contrarian. Yep, um, 
that nine times, I'd probably say 10 out of 10. That's usually me in the phone call. That's usually me with um, our orientation team phone calls. Yeah. So you're part of the, one of your big roles is with the onboarding team. Yes. Like you, Ed, and Susie kind of built that whole program from the ground up. Yes. So, and now, you know, you're kind of building layers to that. Yep. What has changed the most in terms of how new clients are onboarded over the last year, and how has that changed the client's journey for the better? Uh, having a system in place that provides some consistency um, and quality control, uh, I think has improved the client's experience mm -hmm. um, and also allowed them to um, see where we're going. You know, it's fun to ride in a car and just go for a ride and just, you know, look out the window and you don't really know where you're going and you don't really care. Uh, and then there's other times you have a specific destination and a specific goal and you want to know, you know, okay, we've got 10 more miles till our exit, 10 more miles kind of thing. So. I think before we were all kind of riding and just looking out the window and it was really fun and we were eventually getting to our goal, um, but I don't know that both parties were on the same page, the mm -hmm. client and the coach, as to when are we getting there. Uh, I think now we have a fantastic system in place that puts everybody on the same page and promotes a lot of communication um, to make sure that we are on the same page and headed towards um, the destination that you're wanting. And you know, that's been one of the things that we've struggled to figure out is how do you, how do you build a, a system that really fully standardizes things for people, that gives them a set structure to follow, that we've tested and knows is, know is successful, but also right still is individualized, right, and humanized sure. and cares about the person. And so I think that's been, you know, what you guys have done is really help when people come on board, they get a good mix of both. I would totally agree. And then that also helps when they transition into general population, then all the coaches are aware that we have covered the following topics. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mean we don't have to go back and cover them again or answer questions, but that there has been exposure at some point in this period of time to these following things. Mm -hmm. um, to, so that we are on the same page, but also to set up some expectations so that um, we're all under the, the same understanding that if, if we want to achieve this, then let's achieve it together and, and here's how we do it. And I'm in your corner every step of the way. And it, you know, whatever, that may entail. So how do you balance owning a gym, running yeah. a gym, mm -hmm. working with us, which can be crazy at times, having <laughs> yes. three kids, yes. and a husband who has got can have a crazy work schedule? Uh, <laughs> you know, I get asked that a lot. Like, how in the world do you do it? Um, for me, at the end of the day, the, the heartfelt truthful answer is how do you not yeah. I, I don't I, there's no there's no other way that you've ever no known. it's not yeah. like I mean I, I I could probably sleep a little bit more if I did one you know one less thing um, I love all pieces of that now I may be a little intense at times and kind of screaming at my kids to get in the car and may need a you know some mornings an extra cup of coffee but for the most part uh, I love what I do. I, I love my gym. I love the people in my gym. I love being able to educate others that creates a ripple effect of leading a healthier, higher quality of life than when they came in my door. I love being able to reach people in the nutrition aspect of the same objective and goal. Um, and my kids just add utter, complete, craziness, fun, and spice, and just make me smile oh, every that's day. that's good. So how has your work at each perform impacted the way you do things at your gym? Um, hmm. 
I think I'm a better boss <laughs> from it. You're like, God, these people need to perform, don't know what they're doing. I better make sure I have my stuff together at the gym. <laughs> I'm taking notes here. <laughs> Um, I do have, or I do have a bunch of systems in place that automate several things like we have. And then my coaches add that, you know, cherry on top yeah. um, to it that is very similar parallels. Um, I think it adds value um, being able to um, speak about each perform more than just the client. I think that I can add um, value to the experience in my gym um, more than I could before having now been on the other side. Um, so I think it only makes myself better and makes my gym better by being invested in um, each performance. Awesome. Well, any, any parting words for the camera? I'd say to the people, but it's literally just a phone on a chair. So it looks like we're doing something official with an American flag in the background. I know. So what do we want to so patriotic. Look what do we want to tell the camera? Look at that. Um, about summer camp? I don't know. Just about about summer camp, each perform. What, uh, what is one thing, if you could tell all the clients, what, what's one message you could tell them? You can do it, tiny tiger. <laughs> That's been a running joke all week. <laughs> oh, um, gosh. That um, summer camp's been a blast. Um, I'm having a hard time getting out of the driver's ed mode with Susie driving. It's kind of freaking me out. I'm having to tell her, like, they're breaking, they're breaking, they're breaking, they're breaking. And Susie's like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, we're all backseat drivers. So, that's really funny. Um, Oh my goodness. Um, I love what I do. And it's funny because my husband makes fun of me all the time that I, I can't hide my emotions. I mean, you can. I you, couldn't tell that whatsoever. You, I, I, I think I'm good at it sometimes. I really do. But um, I'm not. Really not. That I wish the clients could see my face when I'm doing the review to know. Um, the smiles, the laughter when they put funny jokes in there, um, that I love what I do. I'm super thankful to be here and I think I give Paul gray hair every day. <laughs> Maybe not as much as you'd give him, but I think I, think I have Paul's like a couple hairs. hair than anything. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's it. Well, I think it's food time. Yes, I'm starving. Let's go get some food. Perfect. It's been a day of we don't eat for like a full stretch, and then we eat so much we have to take a nap. You took a nap. I did take a nap. I didn't get a nap. And then I had a dream about Paul nap. during my nap, and it was really <laughs> awkward. So is that called a nightmare? <laughs> yes. We're not going to edit that out. We'll see you guys later. as a whole, what? ETP, yeah that's no bull, change substance and food to power, behold, the life altering gift from the earth, packaged and be sold, that's the crazy evolution bestowed, and uh, in real life we all they're bringing the heat, raw PRs with new passion in the gym we complete, that's why we eat to perform, we got goals in our view.